Welcome to Flight Sim Alaska. I'm Dave, the Armchair Bush Pilot. Today I thought I'd sneak in another one of these just for the fun of flying kinds of videos. So what I want to do today is fly out of Palmer, which is here in South Central Alaska, Palmer, Buddy Woods Airport, and then fly into Merrill Field. And we'll go ahead and take the route that follows the Glen Highway, which is my normal commuter route. And I'm going to go ahead and take this flight design um, CT Supra light. The conditions are sort of like, eh, they're okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. We're going to go ahead and start cold and dark because again, this is uh, for the fun of flying kind of video. So we'll set that as our departure. Cool. And then we will set, <clears throat> oops, that's Birchwood. Runway 25 at Merrill Field, which is the, the big general aviation airport as our arrival. Cool, 17 minutes. It's going to take us a lot longer than that, but um, not too much longer. All right, so I'm going to get us into this aircraft and I'll come right back to you. Hi, I'm Dave, the Armchair Bush Pilot. Before we start this video, I just wanted to remind you to hit that like button down below, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe too. It's a small thing to do, but it makes a big difference for me. It helps me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm producing, and it helps other viewers find this channel. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one. All right, here we are in the CT Super Light in the Palmer Airport, or I guess the Palmer Buddy Woods or Bud Woods. I don't know. Nobody ever calls it that. I've never heard anybody call it that. I only knew it was called that when I started looking on Sky Vector. So here we are facing north. That's the Tal Talkeetna Mountains, and we're going to head kind of southish that way. So let's go ahead and try to get this thing started. I think I've just about got this one memorized uh, for starting. Um, this one starts without the parking brake on, so let's make sure that's on and locked cool. I don't think the choke does anything. And then I need to goof with the trim. That's something I always do when I get in one of these in the sim, is make sure that's set up. This one doesn't have like a marker to say where the takeoff is. So we're just gonna assume that's it right there. Add a little bit of throttle, open that up. I don't know if we need to do the throttle or not, but there we go. Turn on our beacon, cool. And that's all we gotta do for that. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Nice. Okay, make sure we're not rolling, we're not rolling, awesome. Turn just the rest of the lights on here, because why not? And our avionics. I'm gonna go ahead and tune Palmer Airport manually, and then we'll tune Merrill Field as well, and see if I actually remember how to, remember to go ahead and turn the comm and then request a landing. I think the last couple of times I've done this, I didn't do that, I forgot. I just was like super excited and landed without any kind of clearance. Let's see, one, two, three, six. active now let's go ahead and tune Merrill at 1260 and we'll just leave that so we don't have to mess with this is kind of a pain um, it's kind of a pain to do actually flying because you're bouncing around and you have to like really get these super uh, super carefully yeah see look at that like it's super hard to get right Ugh. there we go that's better that looks good all right so let's see if there's anything else I need to do here no, I think we are Good to go. So let's announce our taxi. Let's see what runway they have us taken off out of. Papa Alpha Alpha Quebec Traffic ACBP 444 is taxiing to runway 16. All right, 16 works. Uh, does not. It's not what it showed us, but uh, we were planned it. But that's cool. That's how I'd prefer to do it, anyways. All right, park and break off. Let's go ahead and get her done. So again, this airport is pretty near where I live. Um, I've taken off out of here a couple of times. I think I said that in a previous video. Right now I've got the the assistance ribbon turned off. Normally when I'm taxiing around an airplane in the or an airport in the sim, I've got that ribbon on because it's absolutely confounding. And if you go to a sky uh, sky vector um, to plan your flight, you can you can get maps of your runways, and that's that's pretty cool. But this one I don't really need. I just need to keep track of what direction I'm pointing. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a short field to take off here. There's no reason not to. This thing takes off on a dime. Right ahead of us here, we've got Matanuska Peak uh, and then Lazy Mountain slightly to the left of that. And that's a really popular hiking destination. And then below that, you can kind of see the water there. That's meant to be the Matanuska River, but that is a really terrible representation of the Matanuska River. That is almost all sandbar from, from that point. 
or from this vantage, I guess, as you're looking down. Let's go ahead and request a departure Alpha, here. Alpha, Alpha, I guess we're not requesting. ACBP 444 taking off runway 16 straight out departure. Now I have traffic turned off, so I don't really have to look, but I'm trying to get in the habit of that. I really want to start turning the traffic on in the sim and start learning how to navigate around that. That's kind of my next challenge, and then I'll start dealing with damage after that. Because right now I've got damage turned off because I just don't know what I'm doing. I frequently land hard and, you know. Cool. Let's get lined up here. Pioneer Peak ahead of us here. Looking not super great. All right. Let's go ahead and take off. That's probably good enough. Cool. This is the part where I kind of get goofed up. I try to do all some trim here so I climb at a, at a nice steady rate. And the trim is super, super, super sensitive in the flight simulator. I mean, anybody who's played it knows that, of course. But I think the reason for that is because if you had a trim wheel, you'd need that extra sensitivity. Um, and I don't have a proper trim wheel. I've just got one of my sliders mapped to uh, to trim. And, you know, if you muck with it, 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 it'll work. Minimize that. We don't need that. Over here is what we call the Butte. Almost nobody calls it by the, the full name Bodenberg Butte. But on maps, that's, that's what it is. Um, I don't know that it's actually this close to the Matanuska River. It must be, though. But there's some hiking trails. You can climb up this side. I think the other side's got one, too. Um, and I've done that once. It's fairly steep from the side that I went up. It was pretty. That was a pretty intense climb. This isn't that tall, so it wasn't a huge, huge deal, but I was definitely not in shape for it. So again, Matanuska River. And this over here is the Kanik River. And again, this is all those sandbanks and things like this, sandbars. And out here is... Spot called Jim Creek. I think that's out there. Yeah, that's right. Around this direction. And people will go out there and camp and absolutely party super hard. That is an absolute party pretty much all summer long on the weekends. I've never gone out there on the weekend for that kind of thing. It's just way too rough for my tastes. But but that's a thing. So if you ever like driving, you know, out the old Glen Highway, we'll pass by the old Glen later on. It kind of, just after this Pioneer Peak, it kind of turns over and there's a, another bridge over there and then the old glen actually the bridge must be right here I've, i'm totally i'm totally mistaken here the bridge is here i'm that's where the bridge is but you can drive out here there's a lodge out there i don't know why i got confused it's because it's full of water this is not full of water it kind of pinches off right here and that's where jim creek is in this area that's where the camping happens not there here i was wrong this got me turned around it's amazing how easy it is to get turned around when you're flying around an airplane like this I would imagine in real life it's just as bad, if not a thousand times worse. Last night I tried to fly around New York City. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'll just pick this airport and that airport. And that was that was not easy. Like, you got to know where you're going. Um, here it's a little easier because maybe it's just because I know where stuff is at. But. So this is where we're headed. We're headed towards Anchorage. It's off this direction. It's about an hour's drive south of Palmer and Wasilla. Palmer behind us and Wasilla kind of off in that direction. Those are about 20 minutes apart by the Palmer-Wasilla Highway. The Glen Highway curves around over here. Old Glen follows follows the, the bottom. Bottom of this Chugach Mountains over here. I right, kind of don't want to be this high. I want to get down a little bit lower. This here is Goat Rock. It's pretty rugged on one side. It's like a sheer cliff right, right right next to the highway. I don't know if it's that way by, you know, naturally or if it was blasted out when they put the highway in, but this side here too. The Alaska Railroad comes around this side of the Goat Rock and it doesn't, you can see it, but the, the bridge doesn't come in. The bridge does come in for the highway, though. You can kind of see the highway below us. Now, this area out in front of us, this is the Palmer Hay Flats, and that's a state game refuge. A lot of moose out there, hundreds sometimes in the wintertime. They like to come down here and eat when it's cold. Great uh, recreation opportunities, small game hunting. I think you can hunt out here if you get the right kind of permit for moose in the right, right time of year. If you want to do just some afternoon sightseeing like this mirror reflections lake here is a really good one there's actually a loop around there it takes like 20 minutes and like a nice great big uh tower kind of thing you can you can walk up and, and do bird bird seeing bird watching i guess that's pretty nice to do and this is really not that wet here this is a lot of sandbars it, actually this this sort of hay flats sort of stretch out and this here is the manuska river and the connect river as well and that Kinnick River comes from the Kinnick Glacier back up in there. And I think Kinnick comes from the Denina Athabascan, but I didn't look it up for this video. I thought maybe I'd cover that some other time. Yeah, you can see here the, the 
these uh, railroad doesn't have any bridges, which is weird. And this here is my regular commute along this highway. It's super pretty, actually. Now, something else to point out here, these textures suck. Uh, they're really not great at all. And this is all trees through here, just trees, 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 all through here, all trees, even on top of this, trees everywhere. And this is more swampy, or I guess sort of coastal, not mud flats, like coastal uh, yeah, wetlands, I guess. That's that reflections like you can actually see the hiking trail around there. You can get right along the Kinnick River. This is one of the channels, the Kinnick River, and it moves really fast. If you're at Fallen, you'd be in some big trouble there. Too busy talking. Oh, see, I'm over speeding here. Let's go ahead and back off our throttle a little bit. We don't need that much. We don't need that much speed. Cool. So now we're joining the Glen Highway here. Again, this is my commute. I kind of missed some stuff here. Right in here, this interchange between the old Glen Highway. Something cool in there is there's a tree that used to be in here that was decorated as a Christmas tree every year and lit up with, I want to say, like a car battery and like a, what's it called, a solar panel. I think more recently they've stuck a, a metal tree out there that's a little bit more permanent. So that's that's kind of a cool thing for the winter time, like this time of year. This here again is sort of coastal wetlands. This hardly any trees in here. There definitely are some, but it doesn't look like this at all. It's more like this here throughout. You get you know all kinds of waterfowl nesting in there through the spring and and summer. Now we're passing about to pass over the native village of Akluna. That's in this area here. This is a power stations fairly new probably in the last 10 years they built that this is not a good representation of that at all uh, but that's where it is in any case now the folks from Aklutna I understood that Aklutna is sort of more of a fishing um, fishing village like historically if you want to go way back because um, the, these folks that, that are here now mostly came from Kinnick which is over here and Kinnick was sort of the original big city that started like you know 150 years ago or something like this in the early 1900s late late 1800s and it was Anchorage over here was the place where people would anchor. It was Kinnick's Anchorage, and then they come over to Kinnick. And now when they put the Alaska Railroad in, here's Kinnick right here, or I'm sorry, Aklutna right here, native village of Aklutna, the Aklutna River. And this did used to have all five species of salmon, and these days it doesn't because there's a couple of dams in here. Uh, and then up there, that's the Aklutna Lake, and that's the main freshwater source for the city of Anchorage. But as I was just saying, when they put the railroad in, they decided to, to, to base it out of Anchorage here, and that pretty much killed Aklutna, or I'm sorry, Kinnick over here. And you know, there's there's like a visitor center there now, and a few people, old archaeological sites, but that, that's all we got. Is that Aklutna River here again? So, and the municipality of Anchorage um, is geographically large. We are inside the municipality of Anchorage right now. And if you've been watching my other videos, you'll know that the municipality of Anchorage goes all the way down to Girdwood, which is really close to an hour and a half drive south of where we're at right now uh, in the sim. And so I want to say that it's it's on the order of the same size as like Rhode Island, the state of Rhode Island. I'd have to verify that, but I think it's pretty darn close. And Alaska doesn't have counties, and the way cities are defined is a little funny. So this this huge municipality is, is what we have for Anchorage. And so all of this is under the same municipal government. This is so goofy looking. Now, oh, this bare mountain here, this does not look anything like reality. This is very steep, yes. Uh, and there are definitely some, some cliffs and things in here, but it's all tree covered here. All the way even onto the ridge here, you'll see trees. Actually, you can see one right up there. Um, so that that's kind of a drag, but this is a pretty mountain in real life. This here is Mirror Lake. Um, Boy Scout camp over here. I spent a lot of time there as a kid uh, doing Boy Scouty things. I got a sailing merit badge on that lake. It's one of three that I got. The other two were leather working and forestry. So I wasn't exactly the best Boy Scout in the universe. But I did try. I got a participation medal, I guess, if you will. Participation merit badge, I suppose. Birchwood Airport is just kind of off our nose here. You can kind of see the lights. It's another fairly busy municipal airport, I think, actually. Um, it, this one was one of the airports that was crashing a few weeks ago in the flight simulator along with Talkeetna and Wasilla. And you can see it's generally back in operation. I think it had to do with the system memory in my machine. Upcoming here is this Peters Creek, and actually this area is called Peters Creek. I think uh, Buddy's house is over here somewhere. I don't know where. I wouldn't point it out even if I did, but it's like in this area. And um, yeah, and just on the other side of this, we've got Birchwood. Like, 
community of Birchwood, which is still part of the municipality of Anchorage. Now this Peters Creek here is actually down in a pretty deep ravine. I want to say that the level of the water here is about 60 feet below this bridge, and this is still pretty steep. Where this highway comes down, this is steep and fairly dangerous in the winter. This is a Three Bears. It's basically a sort of a grocery store kind of place, a bit like Costco. It gets all their stuff from Costco, a bunch of Kirkland stuff. And that's where I usually go grocery shopping. It's in here. I'll stop on my way home like on Friday. Um, yeah, church there, fire station, I think. Now, I'll try and get back over the highway here and keep on track. It's here up here is the Old Glen Highway again. It kind of, kind of stays separate for a big chunk of this, but there's a spot where you can't get from, um, you can't, you can't bypass the Glen Highway. People, when there's accidents, will try to take this route instead of and try to avoid the, the traffic. But but this is it. This is really the main road out of Anchorage heading north. There's not really another way. And so when this is bottled up, that one's bottlenecked too. There's just nothing for it. Now, what I will say about this Old Glen Highway, though, is it's incredibly cr pretty. It's fairly high up. And so at certain points, you have a fantastic view of Upper Cook Inlet here and Mount Susetna, sometimes called Sleeping Lady. And then off in this direction, if it's really clear and a really nice day, then you can see that Denali and Mount Foraker, and that's also incredibly super scenic. Sometimes um, in the summertime in particular, if I'm driving home, I will actually go off and take this one just because it's a scenic view. Uh, like stop it, there's a grocery store up here called Fred Meyer. If you're from in the Pacific Northwest, you'll know what that is. But they have a sushi counter there and I'd get sushi and drive that way for a longer trip. But I haven't done that in a long time. I'm not allowed to get sushi anymore because the rice is off my menu. But that's cool. This here is Chugiak High School. I don't know what this is. I think this is like an elementary school here. Um, I just don't, I don't think, I feel like it's not actually that close to the road. I've never been in that building, but that's what that is. This lake up here, I forget the name of that lake. It is right up against the highway, but it's really far down. You see this this cliff here? It's down, it's down as much as it is up here. And there are a ton of uh, float planes in there, and you see them taken off. And it's, I don't think I've ever seen anything remotely like an Icon A5, for example. But you know, pontoons, that's the standard here. Pontoons on whatever kind of plane you got. So you see those guys coming off, and they'll kind of take off right over the highway. You can see that various airports in Anchorage here. I believe that's the J Bear Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson. I'll talk about that here in a second. And then I think up here is um, one of these is Anchorage, Inter Anchorage International and the other one is Merrill Field, which is where we are headed. Now right now we are headed over the community of Eagle River. And Eagle River again is part of the municipality of Anchorage. Um, but we do kind of consider all these places sort of separately. People will talk about them like I oh I live in Eagle River, I live in Birchwood, I live in Peters Creek and so on. This here is that Fred Meyer I was talking about where I go get my uh, go get my sushi, or at least used to. That is actually a parking lot right there. It's a Spinard Builder Supply, at least it was. There's a big gas station there too. Big, always busy gas station. I'm kind of on the wrong side of the highway right now, flying over. It sort of loops around. Makes me wonder if I even had that right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's right. I'm right. I know where I'm at. So Eagle River is a lot of military families live here. It's so close to the military base, you get military families, and some of those guys do get uh, housing per diem to, so they can kind of live here. It's it's odd. It sort of drives up the prices here. Like a house in this area is outrageously expensive, but it's also really close to the military base, which is important for those families. So that kind of is what it is. Um, and then this here is Eagle River Valley. You can go hiking up in there. You can go hiking this way too, South Fork Eagle River Valley. Though that's super pretty, I've done that once, and I would love to do it again someday. This you can hike all the way through Crow Pass, and that will take you over to Girdwood, actually. Which again, if you didn't see that video about turning an arm, maybe check that out. Here's the dreaded Eagle River Bridge section of the commute from Wazilla to Anchorage. They've recently expanded or widened these and uh, made new bridges here, and so the commute is not nearly as bad. Right now the pandemic's on, and so I haven't seen how much improvement we got, but I bet it's a lot. And this Eagle River here is actually down quite a bit further, and it's sort of one of these rocky rivers. It's not this big full kind of thing. It's rocky and glacial fed and sort of silty blue-gray. And again, it's like maybe 100 feet below the bridge, maybe closer to 200. And there's only one other way over that river uh, right here. I think there's another crossing further up, but, but one other bridge over here that you can get on that's normal. This is Highland Road, and that's how you get to that bridge. And the main Highland Road goes all the way up here towards that South Fork Eagle River Valley. Now this great looking green area here is actually the dump. 
when you drive past here, it stinks, it reeks. One interesting thing about this is that there's um, a methane reclamation station somewhere in here. I think that's what these buildings are meant to represent. I don't know much about it. I just, I've seen it through the woods and I've, I've heard about it. I understood it was sort of funded by the military, um, which is generally where we're flying over right now. It's all military reservation, which is why there's nothing here. Uh, this is all military land. Um, so, you know, generally you're not out here. This here I think is shooting range. The shooting range is here and this is some more military buildings here. And then we're about to fly over the Fort Richardson or Fort Rich portion of Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson. So you see like Black Hawk helicopters and that kind of stuff. I think there might be a few Chinook stationed out of here. I'm not 100% sure. You definitely see training aircraft rolling up and down this. So you'll see these guys coming in and, and, and training their, their flight skills in here. And this here, I've heard this called the Pentagon of the North. I know this is a really fancy pants military building. Looks good. Always a lot of cars there. Um, but I don't know what they do in there. I expect even if I knew somebody who worked there, they would not tell me. But whatever. So again, all this is military reservation. They train striker out here, striker vehicles. They're sort of these big wheeled military vehicles. I'm going to go ahead and cross over uh, the Glen Highway here. And this is a, also a popular um, air corridor. I think a lot of people use this Glen Highway for VFR kinds of stuff, particularly when it's dark. This is generally all lit up. A lot of parts of Alaska, the highways are not lit up, but, but they are here. Now, some other interesting stuff about this place. So again, we're looking at the, the Army side and the, the Air Force side is over here. You can see the great big runways there. This is, they, they land F-22 Raptors and also C-17s out of here. And of course, there's C-130s and all kinds of normal military stuff too. Um, but anyways, what I was going to say is that this valley here, Arctic Valley, there's a skiing slope up there. It's not open very often. You can go sledding down one of these places. I'm not sure where the sledding hill is anymore. I haven't been in a long time. There's a golf course up here. And then also there's this upper and lower Snowhawk cabin. Lower Snowhawk cabin's right on that hump. And then you can hike way up into that valley to upper Snowhawk. That's something I did when I was in ROTC. And I understand it's a training for wintertime um, activities for, for the Army and, and in the area. So here's that golf course again. This this is Ship Creek here, and Ship Creek kind of winds around through the military reserve and military base and uh, ends up right here near between the Port of Anchorage and downtown Anchorage. And you can go there and go king fishing or Chinook salmon fishing in the summertime. I think it's like a retention limit of one, something like that. Now we're coming over South Anchorage. This is an area we sort of call Muldoon. That's the name of the road, that sort of main road that connects the highway over to this East Anchorage. And over here is the Takatnu Commons. If you've flown with me in any of these videos for any amount of time, you'll know that Takatnu is related to this Cook Inlet. It's the Denai Athabasca name, or sort of the anglicized version um, of the Denai name for Cook Inlet. I think I probably better try to dial up ATC, huh? I did this before. I've done this a couple times before, and I have yet to remember to do this properly. Let's see if this worked. There we go. That I did. Let's try this. Uh, Merrill. Nope. Merrill Tower I didn't have the right frequency. Cool. Alright, so let's see if we can slow this down here a little bit. I don't want to come in too fast. Cool, so we got it. So right in front of us, kind of off to our left, straight ahead and, and then to our left is Russian Jack Spring Park. And it's named for Russian Jack, who apparently was a murderer or something. He's a criminal, anyways. Anchorage is full, that kind of stuff. Um, but that is a, an amazing urban park area that uh, has great skiing trails, great hiking trails. When I was in high school, we did, did orienteering out there. Um, it kind of feels like when you're in the middle of it that it's almost like in the middle of the woods. Now there's another place kind of like this further out um, near uh, Ted Stevens International, which is all those flashing lights there, kind of on the other side of that. And that one's another great urban park. Anchorage is full of them. It's, it's actually kind of, kind of remarkable. I'll try to keep, keep my speed up here. Downtown Anchorage is just, just ahead of us. We don't have too many super tall buildings. We've got our Atwood building and then the ConocoPhillips buildings are kind of our two tall ones. And then also the, the Captain Cook Hotel, a posh hotel downtown, and then the 
Hilton Hotel as well. Those are kind of our, our main tall buildings. And see, I can name them all just about. And there's a few other tall ones as well. But now, just off our nose, almost at the end of that runway there, is the Northway Mall. When I was a kid, that was kind of one of the places to be. These days, it's pretty much bereft. It's been replaced by um, that Takanu Commons I just talked about. And I've absolutely almost seen pilots bite it, you know, sitting in this parking lot looking up. But I will say that there's you know, occasionally cool stuff pops up in that in that mall. I, I kind of have an idea. It's it's not long for this universe with an older part of Anchorage history at this point, you know. Now this Merrill Field is an incredibly busy, busy GA airport. I think whenever you're along the highway here, so the highway turns into Fifth Avenue, and that's, you know, how most people get into town here. You're always seeing aircraft land. Almost doesn't even matter time of day, time of year. It's just super duper duper busy and there's also flight training and stuff out of here too not something i'm necessarily gonna go for but uh you know something cool oof it's gonna be a little bit rough Ooh. that wasn't terrible i didn't put any flaps down so that didn't help Let's see if we can get that ACPC next turn next taxiway Decimal 7 ACBP 444. All right, cool. At this point, I normally ask for uh, taxi to parking, but I have absolutely no idea where any of that stuff is at because I am not familiar with this airport. So we're just going to kind of drive around until we find something. But with that in mind, I think that's all I really had to share for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me the whole time. Um, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more content from me, the Armchair Bush Pilot, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try to do these once or twice a week um, for the foreseeable future, and, and I enjoy doing them. Um, otherwise, thanks again so much for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next video.